Good morning. My name is Jonathan, and uh, I will be reading the lesson for this morning. Um, if you happen to pick up a Bible coming in, um, the first lesson is from the book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 1 to 7. And this will be found in, on page 1040. If you don't happen to have a Bible of your own, you can keep this as a gift from the church. Acts 19, 1 to 7. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, no, we have not even heard that there's a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. Our second lesson is from the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 1 through 8. This can be found on page 1057. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in, in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. Our gospel, our gospel lesson is from the book of Luke, chapter 3, verse 15 through 17. The people were waiting expectantly, and were all wondering. And we were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them, "I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come. The straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is." in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. Moving to 21. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form, like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, whom I love, with you I am well pleased. Now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, John. Let me give you a little heads up where we're going to head today. At the end of the sermon, I'm going to be inviting you as we sing the song to go through a renewal experience. What I'm praying for today and what I'm inviting you to do is to, to enter into 
the opportunity for God to make a move in your life. For, God, for you to experience the presence of God today. And the way we're going to do that is, we're going to, during that song, anyone, we're not going to go by row by row. It's up to you if you want to come forward. You're going to invite to come forward and have what we call a baptismal renewal or a, a, a acknowledgement, a rea- acknowledgement of what God did with you in your baptism. And what I'm going to suggest you do during this sermon because I'm not going to give you the words to say to that during that time. I'm going to suggest listen to the sermon, listen to the scripture readings that we have read and that we'll talk about in the sermon, and, and put together your own kind of words that you want to say in prayer to the Lord when you come forward for that time, just between you and God. So I'll give you a heads up for that. Let me ask you this question to begin. Have you ever thought intentionally, made plans for what your first moves would make when you were embarking on a new endeavor? You ever do that? Like you're going to start a new job or begin a new school year or you're going to move to a new place or begin a new project? Do you ever make plans for what your first moves will make? Frankly, I think most of us wing it most of the time if we're honest. And, of course, what happens there is you can look back and say, oh, I wish I would have done that, you know. I wish I would have planned that better. I look back at when I started here at St. Luke back in 2000, and I have, you know, like, oh, I wish I would have done that better. I wish I would have planned that better. Some of you who who were here at the time going, yeah, I wish you would have, Pastor. (laughs) That would have been great. What would it be like today if we learned from Jesus about making first moves when we start a new endeavor. The sermon series we're beginning today, titled First Moves, we are learning the first moves that the 30-year-old Jesus made when he embarked on his endeavor to save us all. And while Jesus made a lot of first moves, we're going to look at just four of them over the next four weeks. When Jesus was baptized, that's today, When Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit out into the wilderness where he fasted four days and was tempted by the evil one, that's next week. In two weeks, we'll learn from Jesus to find community as he did when he began and called his first disciples and formed a life group. And then in three weeks, we'll see how Jesus was intentionally guided by God's written word when he began his work. So, Baptism, being led by the Holy Spirit, finding community, and being guided by God's Word. These are the first moves that the 30-something Jesus did when he embarked on his mission to save us. And we can learn from his first moves when we move into our future. So today, a first move in following Jesus is to be baptized. I liked how Jonathan said that, baptized. I wrestled with what article to use here, a first move or the first move. In one of my seminary classes, we were asking the professor, what do you do when you, someone comes to faith? How do you disciple them? How do you get them to grow? I mean, what's the first thing you should do? And his response was, get some water. That's the first thing to do, get some water. Baptism has always been the initiation rite into the Christian faith, into the body of Christ, the church. It has always been that way. Jesus instituted it. According to the record of Jesus' life in all four of the Gospels, the first books in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, according to all four of them, the first, the very first move that Jesus made as an adult when he began his ministry was to show up on the banks of the Jordan River and to be baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist. If we want to follow the example of Jesus, if we want to be like Jesus, the first move we make is to be baptized. Now, if you're a guest with us today and you're kind of checking out what it means to follow Jesus and and you're not yet baptized, 
I'm going to encourage you to continue your journey, continue to search, ask the questions, make it an honest search. But maybe sometime in your future, we need to get some water and get you near some baptismal water. But I imagine that most of us here today are already baptized. And so when I say the first move is to be baptized, you're like, check, did that, now what? How is this sermon for me? Well, before we move so quickly to now what do I do, let's for a moment pause to think about and understand what our baptism really is so that we can experience our baptism as the kind of first move that is helpful when we start new endeavors in our life. Because you see, calling baptism our first move, that's kind of misleading because it's not our first move. I believe, and what we teach at this church, is that baptism is 100% the work of God. Baptism is God coming to us. Our baptism was one of God's first moves into our lives. Let me show you from the record of Jesus' baptism why we teach that baptism is 100% the move of God in our lives. So John the Baptist is teaching and baptizing people in the wilderness along the Jordan River, and people are wondering if he might be the Christ, the Messiah. And John answered him this way. I baptize you with water. So he's talking about his baptism. But one who is more powerful than I will come. He's talking about Jesus. His straps of whose sandal I'm not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So John the Baptist is saying... My baptism that I'm doing right now, that you're experiencing right here, is different from the baptism that Jesus is going to institute. Because when you see that he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, I mean, that's only God can do that. We can't do that to ourselves. Only God can do that. Baptism, beginning with the baptism of Jesus, is 100% the work of God. It's his move. And we see that the early church picked this up. They understood this right away. We read in the book of Acts today, chapter 19, Paul goes into Ephesus and he says to the people in Ephesus, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? I love their response. They're like, no, we didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. I love that honesty with God, you know. And what's curious and and informative is that Paul goes, what? How is that possible? And then then this like light bulb goes out. Oh, I bet you I know what happened. And so he asks him a question. What, What baptism were you baptized with? And they said, well, we were baptized with John's baptism. And I imagine Paul goes, oh, now I get it. Because bapt- John's baptism was different. John, Paul says John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. The baptism that John led is kind of like when we confess our sins. We do that on a weekly basis or, you know, regularly. So the people who were being baptized by John the Baptist in the River Jordan, most, if not all of them, had been baptized maybe the day before or the week before or, you know, the month before because that's what they did. It was kind of a ritual washing, a repentance, confessing of sin and hearing that you're forgiven. John says, that's how I baptize. But the one coming after me, his baptism's going to be different. And when John goes on to teach about this, he pulls no punches when he continues to explain the baptism of Jesus, he says, his winnowing fork, so that's like a, a, a wooden pitchfork kind of thing that they used in, in separating the chaff from the grain. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor to gather wheat into his barn, but he, will burn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. 
Now, that's a kind of harsh verse, but what John is, it's tying back to what he just said. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. When he baptizes you with the Holy Spirit, that's going to lead you to saving faith because that's what the Holy Spirit does so that you'll be like the wheat that God gathers into his barn. He's talking about coming to faith and being saved in eternal life. But the chaff, those who don't trust in Jesus, He'll burn up with unquenchable fire. This is all the prerogative of God. This is not our job. This is way above our pay grade. Baptism that began with Jesus is God's move. And, and, when, and when Jesus himself was baptized, we actually see and hear that it's God's move. Jesus was baptized. And as he was praying, Heaven was opened up. Now notice the direction here. The Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. The direction of baptism that began with Jesus is God coming to us, not us going to God. You see the, the physical illustration of that with the dove, the Holy Spirit, coming down on the one being baptized, in this case, Jesus. And a voice, where did it come from? It came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you am I well pleased. Beginning with the baptism of Jesus, for all those who would follow him and be baptized in his baptism, the direction is God coming to us. It's God's move coming to us to declare to us his love for us, proclaim that we are his beloved children, Fill us with his Holy Spirit and tell us that he's confident in us. They're well pleased. It's all God's move. This is why we baptize people of any age. Sometimes people say, well, you Lutherans, you only baptize infants. No, we baptize people of any age. But we baptize people of any age because it's all God's move. It's not dependent on us having a certain level of understanding or even belief because it's God's first move coming into our lives, which is how it was with Jesus and what John himself said would be the case for the baptism for those who would follow Jesus. This is why in the New Testament, baptism is almost always a passive verb to be baptized. A first move in following Jesus is to be baptized. And so if you're here checking out what it means to follow Jesus and, and you're not, let, not yet baptized, my prayer is that there's some water in your near future. But I also want to add this then to this statement and live out your baptism. This is, this is for those who have been baptized. And you're wondering, okay, check now what how do i live out my baptism how does my baptism become for me a first move when i'm embarking on a new endeavor that's helpful i'm going to share two truths today that i hope will be helpful for your baptism to guide you when you're making your first moves into anything new in your life number one your baptism assures you and me that god's love for you is set before you begin the new endeavor regardless of what happens regardless of the outcome god's love is set for you your baptism gives you confidence that you are a beloved child of God regardless of the outcome of what you're doing. Whether you fail or whether you succeed or for most of the time somewhere in between doesn't change the truth that you're a beloved child of God. That God is not just with you but in you because it's a baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's God himself coming not just to be with you, but to be in you, dwelling in you as though you are his holy habitation, his temple, if you want to call that.
This is the way we are as parents, right? Really, if you think about it. When a child is born into our family, no good and loving parent makes this move like, okay, uh, I'll wait until that child's old enough to tell me, yeah, I accept you as my parents and, you know, I, I, I love you. Until that happens, I'm not going to claim them. I know sometimes you might be tempted to do that. <laughs> but we wouldn't do it. In fact, even before they're born, where they're still in the womb, we are embracing them as beloved children. It's the same with God. God makes the first move, just like a parent makes the first move to love their child. And that child rests in the confidence of that relationship regardless of what happens in their life, right? That's what a parent-child relationship is all about, and that's how God our Father loves us. So as instituted in the baptism of Jesus, in your baptism, God comes to you, makes you his child, declares his love for you, equips you with the Holy Spirit by living inside of you, and so what that means for us when we make our first move into new endeavors is to have our confidence rest in that, not in what we'll accomplish. That's always a dead end, isn't it? If we put our ultimate confidence in what we accomplish, if we're successful or not, it's always, at best, a mixed bag. It's never quite enough. Or we're looking back, I wish I would have done that, or I wish I would have made that move, or I, I wish I wouldn't have done that. But if we make our first move, living out our baptism, we live with that confidence that we already have the victory, that we already have the success because God made it so in his first move. I hope that's helpful for you. Here's the second one. Your baptism, my baptism, is a death and resurrection. What do I mean by it? Well, this is what the Apostle Paul taught. Don't you know that all of us who are baptized in Christ, into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We are therefore buried with him through baptism into death. This is the most unusual teaching about baptism in the New Testament. It teaches that baptism is a spiritual death and resurrection. What happens in baptism is that old, rebellious, tired, worn out, misguided, confused, sinful person that would never turn to God because we're trying to do our own deal, that person is drowned. That rebel is drowned. In the Catholic Church, they call it original sin. I call it simply being a rebel. That's drowned. That's put to death. The old, tired ways of thinking and behaving are put to death. Only God can do that. That's why it's all the work of God. Only God can put to death and raise up. So the old, tired thinking like, you know, I am what I accomplish, karma basically, is put to death and replaced by grace of already being a beloved child of God and God's confidence in us. Paul continued to teach that we are buried with Jesus through baptism into death in order that, look what it says, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. When we step out into our new endeavors, living out our baptism means we understand that we start every day new. It's a new beginning every day. Whatever happened yesterday, successes, failures, aren't going to drag us down moving into the future. That we're a new person every day. We have a new life every day. And that gives us confidence and assurance and, and really, in the end, peace when we begin a new endeavor. I hope that's helpful. So, next step for today's sermon. If you've not yet, be baptized. Come talk to me. We'll figure out how to make that happen. If you're already baptized, I'm going to invite you now
in the next few minutes to reaffirm your baptism. I'm going to call the band up. To reaffirm your baptism. Reacknowledge what God did for you in your baptism. That he made that first move. And I encourage you to use whatever words in your own heart, in your own prayer to do as you do that. There's a lot of words I've used today. Maybe there's something that kind of you latched on to. It's just coming up, dipping your hand in the water, taking as much water as you want, and getting yourself wet. As a way of renewing, reaffirming, reacknowledging the first move that God made in your life. We're going to sing this song, Baptized or Beneath the Waters, I Will Rise. And I'm going to encourage you guys to kind of let loose and worship now as you come forward. This is a song that just kind of builds. And I'm going to encourage you to kind of just let your guard down a little bit. Sing out. You can lift your hands if you want. Come forward whenever you want. We're not going to go row by row. It's a spontaneous thing. If you, is this something you're not ready to do yet? That's fine. Just stay at your seat. And by the way, if there's someone that has mobility issues and you'd like me to come to you, I'll come with you with a bowl of water. So I want you to invite you to stand. And let's go into this time of worship and renewing where God is moving in our lives.